Hi, this is Dennis Surgent. Welcome to the third part of this three-part series about the influencer model. And we'd like to talk to you about the key skills to improve our organizational system. This comes from the book Influencer, The Power to Change Anything. We spoke to you before about the six sources of influence in our system. The level of influence that we have occurs at three separate levels, at a personal level, at a social level, and at a structural level. And these six sources of influence are at play in both motivation and ability, or the will and skill of the people on the team. These six sources of influence, as we've discussed before, are to make the undesirable desirable to surpass personal limits, to harness peer pressure, to make the necessary transformation in our organization and system, as well as finding strength in numbers, both within the system and with the stakeholders in the system, along with demanding responsibility and designing rewards, and then changing the environment. These are important sources of influence that we need to consider, but there are skills necessary to put these influences into place. Key skills to improve the system include coaching on behaviors, quality improvement, spread or the diffusion of innovation as it is sometimes called, stakeholder feedback to affect meaningful improvement, and this is all illustrated by subject matter experts and team members, as well as leaders and managers in the behaviors that they exhibit. The first of these is coaching on behaviors. This has a direct impact on how we interact with each other at a personal level. This is where we begin to surpass personal limits of ourselves and helping other members of the team surpass their personal limits. Managers or team members should coach each other and they should use the direct model of coaching. This direct model of coaching is in part an acronym, but it is also a manner of feedback that is direct and almost always at the moment we observe or hear the behavior in action. It's at that point of direct feedback that we begin to think about the de-influencing, uh, developing a very deep relationship as well as rapport in discussions that we have with each other. It's an I part of the direct acronym that talks about when we focus the coaching, we focus it by telling the person what we'd like to focus on. The R part of this model is to recognize and reinforce the positives of the person and the behaviors that were good, as well as engaging the person in the self-discovery. We use open-ended questions at the E phase of engagement to help them discover for themselves what it is that they did and what they might be able to do better. The C part is to consider causes for whatever gaps we might observe and create a plan to improve. This is not the manager's plan for the person on the team. It is the person that is getting the feedback, whether manager or elsewise. It's important for us to talk and test and tweak whatever that plan is, so that we can have a timeline that leads to improvement and learning. And when managers or the team members give and receive feedback, they influence behaviors in the order of giving, then receiving feedback in return. Part of the influence in the direct coaching model, as I mentioned before, is to make it as immediate as possible to the observed action or words. It's not about the attitudes of the person. It's all about the behaviors because the behaviors are measurable, can be documented, attitudes cannot. 
So we want to be specific and describe the behaviors in words and actions that we saw or heard and describe our own personal reaction to the behavior. We want to suggest alternative behaviors that would lead toward improvement and then describe the behavior in terms of more of or less of on a continuum from effective to less effective. It's inappropriate to use more judgmental words like good or bad or best. It is always a better opportunity to talk about more effective to less effective behavior. Let's do more of this, less of that, and provide feedback to the person as an equal in order to help them and offer only what the other person is ready to hear. This is one time when it's appropriate to defer the feedback. If somebody's having a bad day, it's obvious from their body language and their words that they're really stressed. It can be much more meaningful to say something like, let's make an appointment to discuss this further and ask them to pick a time tomorrow or it may be later today to come back and address this particular observation. It's also important to receive feedback from the person. That means we need to listen actively to what they've got to say. And maintaining eye contact is critical to make sure that we have the most influence in this part of the coaching model. That means we should not be distracted by other people walking by or other people in the room. We should make sure that we're giving and receiving feedback from them in a private way and that we're not distracted by all the other things that could be going on in the background. Let's make sure that we're focused on what they've got to say. Look them in the eyes and look at their facial features or the body language of their face while they're talking. With respect to quality improvement skills, you'll note that we've also talked about this as a way for us to extend our personal limits through the system of profound knowledge. The four components provide us a way to organize our thinking about this, as well as the other topics that we'll cover here in a few minutes. The knowledge that we need is to have evidence generated by the science of improvement. We need to provide it and we need to ask the members of our teams to provide evidence. Telling stories about what we did or how busy we were is not as useful as tell us what the evidence is of either learning or improvement. Running PDSAs are absolutely critical. If you don't run PDSAs, you don't have evidence. You have to run them. That's where you get the evidence. And it's important to solicit and use feedback from customers and other stakeholders. We'll talk some more about that, but it's a critical element of running PDSA cycles. With respect to the systems component of the system of profound knowledge, it's important to use artifacts like value stream maps to quantify the opportunities for improvement and an opportunity for us to use cause and effect thinking. With respect to variation in systems, it's important to use control charts or process behavior charts as they're sometimes called. These kind of charts help us sort out special cause from common cause and save us a whole lot of time and a whole lot of frustration by focusing in on is the problem coming from a special cause or is it coming from the system? It's important too to have the skill of our use of basic principles to influence others. This is part of the psychology of people in teams. We need to show respect for people and we need to use the other basic principles as well. And we need to also use the aim and purpose to find direction and to give direction for ourselves and others. So these are four areas and several skills of actions that we can take. With respect to the spread method or sometimes called the diffusion of innovation, we use the same four categories of knowledge systems, variation, and the psychology of people and systems. In order to diffuse information and innovation and improvement throughout a system, we need to think about 
how we can include more people in understanding the improvement. We run PDSAs and cycles of learning and improvement in some phases that are fairly predictable. A typical phase arrangement is to go from one place and when you've discovered that you've made an improvement in one place, then run it in two places again. Run the same PDSA cycle in two places. You might even find ways to adapt the process improvement and then take it on to four places, then on to eight. And once you get beyond eight places that you've tested this out, go to all. It's important for you to not feel that you got to perfect it at absolutely every place. But if you test it at one place, two places, four places, eight places, and you have found that you've found improvements that you can make, then take it to all places and still run one more cycle of PDSAs. It's important to think about how you define the organization as a very complex social system. And it's a network of people to be influenced. So you need to think about this with respect to the innovators and early adopters in that social system, and they'll help you spread the improvement as an innovation. With respect to variation in the spread model, it's important to plan your communications to all the stakeholder audiences based on what they need to know to spread the innovation to more people. You need to think about the variables of those specific stakeholders. Everybody doesn't need to know the same thing, but the more you understand what they need to know, the better you can tailor your communications to the specific audiences that need to be engaged in the improvement. The role of stakeholder feedback in finding strength in numbers is something that I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to think through and understand. In this area of the social aspects of whatever change, whatever improvement we're trying to influence, we build strength in our numbers as soon as we start to take the idea and the innovation out to the stakeholders. That should always start with customers first, with the people who are other stakeholders in the system, including employees, including sometimes regulators. And the more we take the idea out to demonstrate what the idea is about, the more we get feedback from the innovators and early adopters. Innovators and early adopters are present in our stakeholder groups. And it's important to think about inviting them to become engaged in the idea and the innovation as early as possible. When we begin to engage the innovators and early adopters, we begin to influence the solution the idea and the opportunity for improvement. And instead of it just being our idea to throw over the fence to the stakeholders, again, starting with the customers, when we have the innovators and early adopters in any of the stakeholder groups, we have an opportunity for it to become not just our idea, but their idea. And they'll start to advocate it with what's called the early majority and the late majority in our social system. So it's really important for us to build numbers. We use the same knowledge that we've developed through the PDSA cycles. We use value stream maps. We use control charts or process behavior charts to show the problems as well as the solutions in detail. It's important for us to use the feedback to shape implementation and adapt our plan with feedback from those stakeholders. Stakeholder feedback also helps us find the strength in numbers. It's an opportunity for us that goes beyond just running PDSAs. Once we've run a number of PDSAs and cycles of learning and improvement, it's important that we present the evidence generated to further spread the idea of this improvement. It's useful for us to solicit and use feedback from customers and other stakeholders. Things like posting copies, large scale copies of the value stream maps demonstrates the opportunities for improvement 
and using control charts or process behavior charts to show the problems in detail is also very useful to help people understand that you understand the problems that are occurring in their system. And it's also really critical to the feedback of the people working in the social system to see that their feedback has been used unadulterated to shape the implementation and adapt the spread plan to share with other stakeholders. This is part of what spread is all about. It's part of what improvement is all about through the PDSA cycle. Last, I'd like to talk to you about changing the environment. I'd like to speak to you for a few moments about how important it is for us to illustrate our skill in the behaviors we exhibit as managers. It's important for us thinking about knowledge, systems, variation, and psychology of people and teams. It's important for us to ask questions. Open-ended questions are best. And to ask for evidence of learning and improvement in the PDSA cycles and control charts of the people who are working in various design teams. If we want to change the environment, we have to change it with evidence that it's not just a change we're proposing, but a change that has led to improvement. With respect to the systems, we need to understand the interdependence between the parts of the system, and we need to, to manage the processes and remove the obstacles that are found by the people working on improvements. With respect to variation, we need to show and demonstrate that we understand the variation in people and processes, and that we're not just out to accomplish some goal that we've set, but to work with people to set goals that improve the system. Most importantly, it's critical for us and the psychology of the people in our teams to act with humility. A key phrase that I've learned can have great impact on people who have many questions is to say, I don't know, let's find out. That implicates that we don't know everything and that it's important for us to find out together. It's not, I'm going to find out, it's let's find out. It's also important to use Deming's 14 points for management to identify if we're doing everything we can think of and if we're thinking of everything that he submitted as information that he's discovered that has a huge influence on the transformation of a system. This is how we influence the transformation with evidence. I would like to thank you for your attention and suggest to you that if you have ideas for improvement, if you discover anything contrary to the theories we've articulated and tested here, please bring them forward. I would love to hear your evidence. As a recap, these six sources of influence in our system are attending to the will and skill of the people who work in the system to influence it. These areas of influence are at a personal and a social and a structural level. If we desire to make structural changes, we need to attend to the personal level first. If we want to make social changes, we need to attend to the personal levels of influence. And certainly once we've attended to the personal and social levels of influence in our system, we can then begin to start looking at the structural changes that we need to make to influence the whole of our system. Thank you for your interest and your kind attention. You have my phone number, you have my email, and I urge you to call me or write me. If I can't answer your call or email immediately, please leave a message that tells me how I can best contact you, and I promise you I will call you back or send an email reply just as soon as I can. Thank you.